This video is going to demonstrate uh, using the canine castration model. Uh, we have the ability to do both an open castration and a closed castration. So first of all, we're going to load up the scalpel blade. So we're going to use a number 15 scalpel blade. Again, reminder, just remember, always work on the blunt side of the blade. We're going to hold it there and one click and then place our scalpel handle uh, pointing downwards and away from us and then sort of slide on parallel and then bring it forward until we hear the sort of click and so we're in. With the canine castration we're going to do a pre-scrotal incision and so we want to be able to bring the uh, testes up into that pre-scrotal position and so it's important that we develop a sense of where that um, incision is going to be. So with uh, one hand bring up the testy to that pre-scrotal incision with your non-dominant hand, uh, stabilize the testy and then make the incision uh, directly over the testicle. So at this point, we're just going through the skin. We don't want to go through any uh, deeper layers and use the tension to help us as we sort of cut through. Once we're at that point, then we can uh, bring out the testy and uh, you'll see that the testy is within a tunic. So this is the vaginal tunic represented by the condom layer here. And so if we wanted to do a um, closed castration, uh, we can come across here and we'll demonstrate that second. Uh, what we'll do here is an open castration. And so what we need to do is very carefully uh, open up the um, vaginal tunic. So. We do that again, stabilizing the testy and just very light pressure um, to cut through. And so now we can bring the testy out of the tunic. And so then the tunic drops away. Now we can see the, um, the vessels that form the and piniform plexus, the vascular supply. We can see the um, vas deferens going up to become the epididymis and then comes around to the uh, head of the epididymis. The next uh, thing that we're gonna do is grab some uh, forceps and come through the hole that's been created between the uh, pedicle and the um, tunic. And we're gonna clamp across here and then with controlled um, pressure, we're going to stabilize the testy and uh, pull that off the head of the epididymis. And there we go. So we can leave the clamps on there. We may get some, a little bit of bleeding from the chromaster muscle and things that is contained there. And then now we can uh, bring things out and just take the time to have a look and see uh, the vessels, the uh, epididymis, uh, sorry, the vas deferens and the testy. Now we're going to place our clamps um, across the vascular pedicle. We're going to use Rochester Carmel clamps and so you can see they have uh, longitudinal uh, grooves in them and so that allows the suture to sit into the groove. We're going to do a modified, um, modified uh, two clamp technique. So we go across perpendicular, just have the tips through and always have the tips pointing upwards. So there's one. And then we're gonna place another one uh, distal to that. And so we have uh, two clamps in position there. Once we uh, are there, then we're able to um, pass our suture material. And the first knot we're gonna do is an encircling knot and in this particular case, we're gonna do a modified Miller's knot. So I generally like to start from cranial, come underneath the um, hemostats, come behind the pedicle, and then come underneath the um, clamps, and then come underneath the clamps again, so leaving a loop here, and then coming all the way around the back uh, that way. So now we've been around twice, uh, I have the needle end here, the free end here, and then a loop that forms in the middle. I put my um, needle drivers through the loop from caudal to cranial, and then I'm gonna do a single throw and then grab the free end and bring it towards me uh, laterally. 
So this is the strangle knot. So this is very good uh, for vascular pedicles because it remains tight as we put the tension on. What I'm going to do now is remove the most proximal of the Carmel clamps and then sort of tighten up uh, this knot. By keeping my instrument close to the pedicle, I can pull on the other side and so avoid uh, wasting suture material there. So now, equal t equidistant uh, from the uh, ligature, I can tie a nice tight knot and I sort of keep tying until it's very, very tight, uh, which is good. Then I'll do a single throw and go back towards the midline and then lock it off with a square knot. So single throw uh, to the outside, single throw back to the inside. Now we can uh, cut the excess suture ends with the suture cutting scissors and depending on the size of the vessel that may be sufficient uh, if it was a mature animal and uh, you know generally for practice we'll get you to also place a transfixing ligature but just be aware that in some clinical cases that may not be required so for a transfixing ligature uh, we're going to go from caudal to cranial and we want to place our ligature between the encircling ligature that we have and the uh, most proximal of the uh, vascular clamps. So using the needle, uh, passing through, and we want to be through all the tissues. There we go. In the middle part there, we use our forceps to grab the pointy end of the needle and bring it through. And then now we can use our sutures. So again, making sure that we're underneath and I like to work on the cranial edge now and so you can see I can rotate these backwards and forwards I'm not pulling a lot I'm just you know manipulating the tissues by rotating backwards and forwards so in order to uh, place a transfixing suture we're going to go with uh, a double throw so create a surgeon's knot um, take the free end and then I know it goes away from me I'm going to take off this distal, uh, proximal clamp rather, and so that my suture can sort of sit in there, nice and tight. And then I do a single throw, and so again, nice and tight. So you can see that I've tied off the 180 degrees that's sort of closest to me, but I haven't tied off the far side. So now, as part of the transfixing suture, I come around behind the testi, around the pedicle, and I now have the other uh, 180 degrees that I can tie off. Over on this side, I can either do a surgeon's knot or a single knot. Uh, surgeon's if it's got a lot of bulk there. And then again, pull it in nice and tight. And then single throw. And then lock it off with a square knot on top. So single throw and single throw. Okay, and I hold the suture ends up and can cut through there. Now I can place my uh, Carmel clamps again. I want to be close to that uh, transfixing suture. Click it on, and then I'm going to cut with the scalpel. Always want to cut nice and flat uh, rather than cutting in deep so that I can sort of see where that scalpel blade is. So cut through there. And so that's the testy removed and so that goes to the back table and then now we want to check for uh, any bleeding from the pedicle site so we take a good firm grip of the um, pedicle distal to the ligatures release the uh, carmel clamp then we can assess for any bleeding if we do notice bleeding then it's easy for us to reapply the clamp in this case there's no bleeding and so we can return uh, the uh, pedicle back into the tunic. We can either leave this uh, tunic open or again if it was a mature dog uh, we could then sort of close it off and put an encircling ligature around um, that tunic and then it pops back into that uh, pre-scrotal position. On the other testy we'll just uh, demonstrate the closed uh, technique for castration. And so with this one, we're going to again bring that testy up 
through the prescrotal incision, bring it out. So closed castrations would be indicated uh, for very young animals uh, where there's not much tissue behind there. Uh, and also for cases of testicular neoplasia, uh, where from a surgical oncology principle, we don't want to uh, get into the um, testicle tissue itself. So in this case, we would uh, again sort of place our clamps um, across the, the base there, remembering that we can't actually see the uh, vessels um, through the tunic, so we don't actually get to see those. And then it's the same thing, uh, an encircling, uh, followed by a uh, transfixing. So we can do the Miller's knot as we did before, or we can just do a straight up encircling ligature. I'll just show, demonstrate the encircling for this case. So we would use a surgeon's knot for this because of the um, volume of the tissue in there. So one, two throws, bring the free end, which is away from us and bring it towards us. Again, let it sit into that longitudinal groove formed by the Rochester Carmolts. Uh, and then sort of nice and tight, equidistant to really get equal pressure there. Then it's a single throw that goes away from us in this case. And then another square knot on top. So single throw and single throw. And we're going to cut through there. More important with the closed castration to have our transfixing as well. So obviously this ligature is not directly um, engaging. It has the, um, the tunic sort of between them. So uh, we'll place a transfixing so that it's not going to be able to retract back inside the body wall. Uh, so we go from caudal to cranial, uh, come out through all the tissues there. Grab the needle, bring it through. Same as we did last time. So surgeon's knot, double throw. Open nice and firmly. Single throw and then free end around the back of the pedicle, making sure we haven't got any other tissues incorporated. In this case, a surgeon's throw, tight, tight, tight. And then lock it off with a square knot on top, so a single throw and a single throw. Cut our suture ends down the bottom. Place our carmalt across, and then with our 15 blade, carefully cut through the tissues. And then that goes away, so you can see that's sort of closed still within its tunic. Uh, now we hold the pedicle, release check for any signs of bleeding, and if there is bleeding, then attend to it. If there's not, uh, then we replace it back into the uh, pre-scrotal incision. Closure then is going to involve uh, some subcutaneous and ideally some intradermal sutures uh, to close the skin.